watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 6, covering the entire DMV. A fatal Christmas Eve fire, the massive response to a Maryland home as investigators work to find the cause. And a last chance to shop, DMV shoppers and store owners sound off about last minute purchases before Christmas. And Santa Claus is coming to town. Community present giveaway, DC children. How police are making strides to bring peace and goodwill. And it's the big night. Santa Claus is coming to town. How will the weather fare for him this evening? And how will your travels go the day after Christmas? I'm coming up in your forecast. And speaking of Santa, we're tracking him. This is a live look of the NORAD's, of the NORAD's track of the Jolly Red Man delivering presents across the globe. Hear from the top defense officials who are tracking St. Nick. And good evening. Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. You're watching DC News Now at 6. I'm Ben Dennis. A woman is dead after a large house fire in Allegheny County, Maryland. Officials say that it happened on Lee Street in Frostburg just after 7 o'clock this morning. The fire took around 75 firefighters from multiple departments an hour to get the fire under control. Once extinguished, firefighters found a 58-year-old woman dead inside of the single-family home. That cause of the fire is still unknown. D.C. police say that a man was killed after being hit by a car in an alleyway just last night in Northeast. We're told it happened around 10 o'clock near 5th Street. Police say the man, 34-year-old Samuel Thornton of the district, fell in the alley. Then a car had entered the alley before the driver unknowingly ran him over and killed him. The driver remained on scene. He's cooperating with police. The medical examiner is ruling Thornton's death as an accident. In Prince George's County, there were 10 fights in one week at Flowers High School and a student found with a gun. Many say the recent violence there could have been avoided if the school's principal did not take leave back in October. We learned that Flowers High School principal Gorman Brown has been reinstated. They took him from us, not giving us any notification on why he was taken. Mayhem happened in this school. So that goes to show you the power that this man have over these babies here. I know once we put Dr. Brown back in the schools, he will bring that now the details of Brown's absence have still not been released. Time is 6.02 over to weather now with Derek Bowen and for meteorologist Scott Summer. We've got a live look of Roslyn. Hey, no sight of Santa right now, but we know he's on the way. Hey, and we also saw a little bit of sunshine today as well. We're actually sitting with partly cloudy skies, 46 degrees here in D.C. Calm winds out and about. Looks to be like a calm, nice winter's night tonight. Looking at, of course, uh, as we head over the next couple days, so the weather pattern will change just a little bit. Had a few sprinkles here and there over the past uh, 12 hours or so. We even saw a little bit of rainfall last night in Hagerstown heading home over the mountains into Frederick. I went and saw a little bit of rain, only about six one hundredths of an inch in Hagerstown, only one one hundredth into Frederick as well as DC as well. Just a few light areas of rainfall here and there. We're tracking our next round of rain back off towards the west. It's impacting areas of the Midwest as well as the south central portion of the country today. It moves into the Ohio River Valley tomorrow and even seeing some snow back into the west of Omaha. They have blizzard warnings out and across uh, Nebraska and South Dakota and also going to see a little looks like a wintry mix for Omaha up to Minneapolis. So travel woes there, but we start to see a little bit more of a travel concern once we head late Monday into Tuesday, where we're going to see that chance for rainfall heading into our area before more plentiful rainfall coming Wednesday. All right, Derek, thank you. Some good news for next year for minimum wage workers in Maryland. Starting January the 1st, all Maryland employers will be required to pay hourly workers at least 15 bucks an hour. Right now, the minimum wage is 1425 for businesses with 15 or more employees. It's 1280 for smaller businesses. The new minimum wage applies to all businesses, regardless of the size. And a new bill passed by the D.C. City Council aims to bring more transparency to the job market. It's called the Wage Transparency Omnibus Amendment Act of 2023. That bill requires employers to publish salary ranges when they post a job. It would also bar companies from asking potential employees about their salaries from past jobs. Councilmember Christina Henderson, who co-introduced the bill, says the transparency saves both sides of the hiring process, time and money. Not only have you wasted an employer's time, but you've also wasted your valuable time going through an interview process for a job that uh, frankly doesn't allow for you to, to pay your rent. 
Henderson goes on to say much of the legislation is geared towards solving gender inequities. The bill goes into effect on June the 30th and is yet to be signed by Mayor Muriel Bowser and needs to go through congressional review. And you're pretty much out of luck if you haven't bought that final holiday present. Stores and shopping centers have closed for Christmas, the final day of Christmas shopping. It drew plenty of shoppers who took care of that last minute gifting opportunity. DC News Now's Dave Laval joins us fr from Georgetown. Dave, how busy has it been there tonight? Well, good evening to you. Ben can tell you it's a lot calmer now that most of the businesses and restaurants here have closed for the holiday. But we had a much different scene here just a couple of hours ago. Shoppers filled both or filled the sidewalks on both sides of M Street. They filled businesses as they took advantage of those last minute sales. The National Retail Federation predicts holiday sales will increase this year between 3 and 4% from last year to record levels of at least, listen to this, $957 billion. The annual survey finds each of us will spend $875 on presents and other holiday re related purchases. And most of the people we spoke to told us they expect to spend more this holiday shopping season. And the holiday and online shopping sales are expected to increase by at least 6% this year. And just a reminder that you can expect long lines on Tuesday as the day after Christmas is typically one of the busiest shopping days of the year. We're live in Georgetown. Dave Laval, DC News Now. All right, Dave, thank you. Well, earlier today, we were also at the Eastern Market in Southeast DC to meet up with vendors and shops that were still open. Plenty of people still shopping. We had a chance to talk with a small business owner to see how the shopping season has treated him so far this year. Thing with the holidays is a lot of our regulars maybe go out of town. DC is a transient city. However, it's transient in the other way because we have visitors coming in. And so holiday shopping is great for all my fellow vendors who are selling their wares to visitors to DC. And looking ahead to next year, you do not need a ticket to go to any of the Eastern Market holiday markets. They are free for all ages. And Christmas spirit is in no short supply in Frederick County. A woman there building a community Christmas town in her garage. It took six months to build, featuring little homes, cars, and people, all made of recycled items like styrofoam, plastic, and paper. I said, what can I do on my part to bring joy to the world? The idea came two years before COVID. And uh, when we built our home, I saw the garage and I thought, this would be a good place to set up such a thing for the community. And her Christmas Wonderland is open in her Brunswick home from 5 to 7 every night until the new gear. It's time for Santa to take his trip around the world to deliver presents, and you can track his journey in real time. As our Tanaya Wright spoke with Major General Huddleston of NORAD to find out how exactly they do it. First up, can you tell us about the amazing NORAD Santa Tracker? Well, it's a, it's a complicated uh, machine. It's uh, serviced by 1,500 Canadian and U.S. personnel using radars, satellites, and fighter jets to track Santa as he uh, progresses on his journey on December 24th. So how, what's your favorite part of this, or how, what does it take to get ready for this big night? Well, uh, we, eat, we, we eat a lot of uh, cookies, and we uh, drink a bit of eggnog, and uh, it's an all-nighter. So, uh, so we have to be uh, well-rested, um, but we do, it, uh, we do it because we love it and because we, uh, we ourselves uh, love Santa when we were young as well. And how long have you been a part of this? I've been a part of it for six years now. And you guys take some calls as well. We do. We you, we do. There's a phone number, one eight seven seven four four six six seven two three. That's one eight seven seven Hi NORAD, and there are people uh, waiting to uh, or able to take calls from uh, from children uh, to give them updates on Santa's progress. I was going to say, I bet you guys get some pretty um, cool calls and getting to hear from all the kids so excited that Santa's making his way around. 
Yeah, we do. Well, I mean, the whole thing started uh, when a young girl in 1955 called uh, NORAD by accident, and then NORAD realized that they had a job to do on behalf of the children of the world. That's so crazy that that's how it started. It was one little thing like this, and it sparked this idea. It's like, why not? Why shouldn't we track him? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so final question. Where can people find the Santa Tracker? How can people watch this on Christmas Eve? It's on a website. I'll just read it out. It's www.norad, N-O-R-A-D, Santa.org. Our thanks to tonight. And, of course, you can track Santa right here live on DC News Now. We'll take another look at where he's at in the world in a few moments. Turning now to Christmas cookies, they're, of course, a holiday must. But we found out which ones the DMV loves the most. Well, for folks in Maryland, it's the Italian wedding cookie. In Virginia, nearly the same, but Italian Christmas cookie, which is also the nationwide favorite. In the nation's capital, there's an international preference. According to Google Trends, folks in D.C. love the Austrian cookie, Vanilli Kipferl. Hmm, new one for you. And new tonight, showing the cute moments that Zahara, a western lowland gorilla infant, is enjoying some icy snacks at the National Zoo. She's eating a fruit sickle chunk that she was able to sneak away from her mom at the National Zoo. If you remember, Z Zahara was the baby gorilla more in May who had a naming contest for her at the time.